Your eyes are not deceiving you. This is a real 3D fractal inside of After Effects. And to prove it to you, I'm going to pause the video and move the camera around the scene. Wow, it looks like some sort of space tangerine. And there's an entire army of them just extending into infinity. So this is using the LaForge plugin and I'll show you how to use it and how to create these incredible fractal mathematical parallel dimensions inside of After Effects. So if you don't know, LaForge is our new plugin for Adobe After Effects and it includes an incredible selection of presets where you can generate color warps, glows, auroras, but today I will be showcasing the Cubic Fractal preset. There is a free trial to this plugin as well, so you can jump in and follow along and start experimenting with the crazy things that this plugin can do. We've linked below a tutorial on how to install the plugin if you have any difficulties. So in Adobe After Effects, I'm going to create a new solid layer and then I can add the LaForge plugin. Now, if we start up the panel, then we can see every preset that the plugin has to offer. I will be selecting Cubic Fractal and then you can apply this preset by clicking Apply Selected Preset. So once that's done, I will close the panel now and you can immediately see this kaleidoscopic fractal that extends into infinity. Now you can see that the plugin has also created a 3D camera for us and we can use the navigation options up here to zoom out into the fractal further as well as get the orbit tool to look around this scene with much more depth. So if you open up the parameters in the fractal, you can see there's a list of so many different things that we can modify. And the most enjoyable thing to modify and animate are these two warp parameters here. So if I begin sliding this, you can see that the fractal is beginning to churn around. It's like seeing into the fourth dimension. So that's warp A and then warp B pivots the fractal on another axis. And so you can see how combining these together can give you a completely unique effect. It's just so satisfying to explore and find these different combination of parameters. So with the other parameters, detail controls how many iterations of the fractal are generated. So making this lower will make the fractal more simple, but increasing this will give it a more noisy organic shape that looks very alien and mushy. The steps parameter controls the iterations that are used in the ray marching process. That may sound complicated, but it basically says how far into the fractal should we see. The next parameter is the bias parameter. It's a little tricky to explain what it does, but it is a variable that manipulates how the fractal is generated. And so increasing this creates more space between each fractal repetition. And so here you can see we've created this far more expansive and endless looking fractal. And lowering this parameter does the opposite until a certain point in which case it begins to shrink again, but in a different way. So it's very difficult to explain what it's doing, but you can see how it's manipulating the fractal generation in a very particular way. The next parameter is the specular parameter. This simply controls how much specular reflections we should see in the geometry, especially on the edges right here. So if I increase that value really high, you can see the reflections are far more pronounced, but then setting that to zero means it's a very diffuse looking fractal. And so this can be used to give it a more metallic feel. The next parameter is the fog parameter, and this controls how far through the fractal you can see. And so setting it to a low value makes it very atmospheric and foggy. And then increasing this allows you to see pretty much into infinity. So you can see that our fractal is made of lots of cube shapes and you can control the size of these cubes using the box size parameter. 
and increasing that gets rid of these edges between each cube, which creates a far cleaner looking fractal. And you can keep on expanding this until everything becomes very small, very tight. But by decreasing the box size, you can create a far more gappy and noisy looking fractal that has a more volumetric feel. The exposure and gamma parameters are fairly intuitive. You can use these to adjust the tone mapping of your fractal to really make it pop and become far more vibrant. The next parameter is the fractal scaling slider. And this is another one of those weird mathematical sliders that manipulates how the fractal is generated. But generally increasing and decreasing this will make each segment of the fractal bigger or smaller. And by going in the opposite direction, you can begin to make the fractals grow until they collide and merge together. Now the slider goes to zero, but the incredible thing about this is that it can take negative values. And so if we grab the number here and click down and drag to the left, we can actually make this go into the negatives. And this creates completely unexpected behaviors, but they're really fun to explore here. So below that is the shadow softness. This is easier to demonstrate when we have a spherical fractal. So what I'll do is increase fractal scaling and then increase the box size as well. Now, if I focus on one of these fractal shapes and begin to manipulate shadow softness, you can see how it creates sharp shadows when the setting is set to zero, but increasing this makes those edges more smooth and soft. It's a bit like subsurface scattering. After that is the light brightness parameter. In the center of the fractal world, there is a single light that illuminates the scene. This is more so that we have something to focus on, but you can disable this by setting the light brightness to zero. And this creates this incredible silhouette looking shape, which is especially fun for creating motion graphics in. And so just by adjusting the settings a bit more, you can see I've created this weird, endless and spooky asteroid field. The next parameter is the edge softness parameter. So if you look closely to our fractal, you can see that each cube has this rounded edge. And so by reducing the edge softness, it makes this rounded edge thinner, which creates a more crisp looking fractal. And increasing this creates a softer fractal so that you don't have those hard edges. Now you may notice that when you set the edge softness to a low value, you begin to get artifacts on the edges. And what we've done to counter that at the bottom is a checkbox named anti-aliasing. So if we enable that and then increase the anti-aliasing size, we can effectively get rid of those weird janky lines. Anti-aliasing does slow it down quite a bit, so just be mindful of when you want to enable it. You can also adjust the colors of the fog and the specular reflections. And a few more checkboxes allow you to disable the shadows as well as disable the 3D camera. And doing this creates a pre-animated camera that simply flies through the fractal. Now let's try to make something with this. I've reset everything so it's on the default settings. And the first thing that I will do is increase the field of view of the camera. Now I really love the silhouette look of the fractal. And so to get that, what I'll be doing is decreasing the light brightness, but enough for them to be some specularity in the shapes of the fractal. And we can boost the specular level once again, just to bring it back. And this creates a very beautiful highlighted looking fractal. Now I want to clean this up a bit. And you can see that where we have the fractal pattern, there are three cubes in each segment, but between these cubes, the intersection line has a specularity line where we don't actually want it to be. And so I will increase the box size until those lines disappear and you get a much cleaner image. 
Now, because it's my favorite color, I will be setting this to a blue tint and then maybe setting the specular color to, let's see, maybe a white or a, a deeper blue. Red looks interesting. And I think I'm happy with these settings. Another way you can do it if you want more customization is actually setting the colors to a white color. And so after the LaForge effect, you can use a curves effect to define your own color mapping. That's looking really nice. I like that. Now, as you can see, if we look at some of the corners, you can see some aliasing. And so I'll just enable the anti-aliasing as well as increase its size until it's more natural. Now, because I want to create a silhouetted look, I want to get rid of these really bright frontward facing segments. And so all I will be doing is zooming backwards until this part becomes out of view and you get this much more contrasted part of the fractal that's in the shadows. Now that we are further away from the center of the fractal, we have to increase the edge softness so that some of those specular details can return. Now you can start having fun adjusting the warp parameter. So if I begin to slide this around, you can see some of the incredible shapes that we're generating here. Oh wow, that's a fun one. It's like a, a sci-fi techie corridor. So just mess around until you find something that you like. For this, I will be animating these parameters. So to do this, I will click on the stopwatch for warp B, and then by clicking the U button, you can see a keyframe has been revealed in the timeline. Now, if I go to the end of the timeline, I can then set the value I want it to be at the end of the timeline. And so when you play the animation, Look how crazy this looks. This can be in a music video or a end credit sequence or just some psychedelic visual for you to use in your film. It is absolutely bananas to think that this was made inside of After Effects instead of a complicated 3D program like Houdini. Now we can actually take this a step further. I will be creating a new adjustment layer and then adding a LaForge effect again. I'll start the panel and add Crate's Light Ray. This simulates a God Ray effect, and so if I close this, you can see it's created this incredible volumetric burst of light. I will reduce the intensity just a bit so we can see the fractal still, and then maybe reduce the tone mapping or increase it so that it's not as pronounced. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, wow. I love how the light bleeds around the uh, silhouetted edges there. One of the incredible parts about LaForge is that you can use it to create and edit your own plugins, including the fractal. And so to do that, you want to click on send preset to panel. And when that loads up, you want to switch to the code editor. This is a code editor that works inside of After Effects. This deserves its own video so that I can cover all of the nitty gritty details. But for those already comfortable with programming, you can simply edit certain parts of the code. And when you're ready, click on apply preset. So as a really quick example, you may have noticed that the diffuse color selector doesn't actually work at the moment. This will be updated shortly, but if you wanted to fix it now, you can go to the parameter settings and identify which variable is used to define the diffuse color. In this case, it's base color. So all I will do is copy that, go back to the code editor, and so on line 736, if you remove this portion of code here, and then instead multiply by the base color and check your code is working by clicking the refresh button. You can see compilation has been successful. And so finally we apply the preset back into After Effects. You can now increase the light brightness and then change the diffuse color. And immediately you can see that you've just successfully edited a plugin inside of After Effects.
I would love to take a moment to thank Shane who helped create this incredible preset. There really is a million different things that you can do with this fractal preset, but hopefully this tutorial gave you an idea about the settings and how to get started in creating the most spectacular things that have ever been created inside of After Effects. If you have any questions or need support, feel free to comment down below or join our Discord where we will be happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and remember to make it awesome!